The hair cicada is the result of a long tradition of aviation. It is a story of men and their flying machines, an adventure that started a hundred years ago with Morin Saunier and which continues to this day. The shapes have changed, the techniques have evolved, but the spirit of innovation remains. For the first time in history, an aircraft manufacturer is pleased to celebrate a century of continuous production. The story begins in 1909, when Louis Blériot was the first to succeed at crossing the English Channel. It was a success, due in part to Raymond Saunier, a young engineer who designed the fuselage. Saunier reunited with his childhood friends Léon and Robert Morin, two brothers with a passion for mechanics and auto racing. He entrusted them with the secret of manufacturing aeroplanes. Léon Morin claimed the world's most coveted record by surpassing the symbolic speed threshold of 100 kilometers an hour. The three friends complemented each other. Together in 1911, they created one of the world's first aircraft manufacturers. Thus, the Société des Aéroplans Morin Saunier was officially founded. To make a name for themselves and garner orders, they needed to win prestigious records. The prominent French newspaper Le Petit Parisien offered 200,000 gold francs to anyone who was able to link Paris and Madrid by air. All the great names of the era took up the challenge. Jules Védrine, a former mechanic turned pilot, participated in a monoplane built by Morin. The final stage of the race at San Sebastian Beach in Spain welcomed this feisty pilot who touched down with elegance. At the end of the 745 mile route, Védrine won the race. It was the first victory that made a name for Morin Saunier across Europe. At the Paris Air Show in 1911, Company was successful with more than 30 orders to follow. The company became organized. Its aircraft were built in the city of Puto, just outside of Paris, before being transported by road to Villa Coublet, where students and clients were trained at its own flying school. Roland Garros was a true aviation pioneer. At the controls of an MS Type H, he made a non stop crossing of the Mediterranean in September 1913. During an eight-hour flight, he covered the 500 miles from southern France to Tunisia thanks to the light weight of his aircraft's wood and canvas structure. For the first time in history, an airplane had connected two continents in one flight. Active on all fronts, Morin Saunier even participated in the Monaco rally by introducing four seaplanes. The public adores the aerial demonstrations of its new hero. The pilot, Brun de Jean des Moulinets, took off from the beach in Dinard and demonstrated his Morin Saunier's exploits with a passenger on board. Technology advanced. For better visibility and stability, the parasol wing concept was developed, a success story that equipped the French Air Force and trained generations of pilots, like here at Villa Coublet. World War I brutally ended aviation's budding dreams for a modern Icarus but the airplane became a real tool. After the conflict, the aircraft industry benefited from technological advances and handling and performance took priority. Robert Morin discusses new flying techniques with his chief pilot. At that time, an accomplished aviator had to know how to perform aerobatics. Michel Détroya, a true virtuoso of the discipline, and Charles Nugesser, a flying ace and war hero, became the brand's best ambassadors. They even organized international competitions. It's a great honor for me to meet in Villa Coublet the German Gerhard Fiesler, who is a great master of the art of flying. 1928, to demonstrate the strength and maneuverability of his parasol monoplane, Alfred Franval, Morin Saunier's chief pilot, set an absolutely incredible record. He took off from Villa Coublet and performed 1,111 consecutive loops. Fonval bettered the world record by a large margin, and supporters who'd come to watch the exploit cheered him on. He eventually landed his plane after four hours in the air. This publicity helped the manufacturer gain new global markets and allowed the company to develop new quality airplanes such as the MS-315, which went on to equip air forces all over the world. In the 1930s, pilot Maryse Hiltz broke some prestigious records. Among them was her return trip from Paris Saigon in the tiny Moth Morin Saunier. She also set several altitude records reaching 38,000 feet, thereby demonstrating the increasing reliability of Morin Saunier's planes. Lefebvre, come quickly and get the barometer! Come quickly and see how high I flew! 
New records always mark new technological advances. A 100% metallic structure, a heated cabin, radio and oxygen on board. Progress was obvious and the wing designs were evolving rapidly. Raymond Saulnier registered an important international patent, the sliding canopy, an idea that was taken up by many manufacturers. The royalties from this invention helped the company's further development. In 1935, the MS-406 became one of the first modern fighter jets. It was designed for use on short and improvised terrain. It became popular because of its modernity. Over 300 miles per hour for the new French fighter prototype, the Moran 406, 1,200 models equipped the best squadrons of the French Air Force at the outbreak of World War II. The Second World War brought the French aircraft industry to its knees, and the business had to be built up almost from scratch as soon as the conflict ended. One aircraft symbolized the industry's revival, the Vano, a fighter trainer that benefited from the newest technology available, full metal skin cantilever design. The war had advanced the aviation industry. With an order of a thousand aircraft, Morin Saulnier then launched its production from the company's new factory in Tarbes, France. New types of aircraft appeared, two- and four-seaters, twin-engine and light aircraft. Soon, another success in military training aircraft was to leave the drawing board, the Moran 733. In the 50s, Moran Saulnier entered the jet age. France needed jets to train its pilots, and the Air Force launched a tender to aircraft manufacturers. Moran Saulnier, with its extensive experience in training aircraft, proposed the Fleuret, a side-by-side -side two-seater. Jean Cliquet was the company's indispensable test pilot. He made the maiden flight and performed a public demonstration of the plane at the Paris Air Show. Ultimately, the Fuga Magistère, the flagship of the French Air Force aerobatic team for over 20 years, was chosen instead of the Fleuret. However, Fuga did not have the facilities for mass production. Thus, it was Morin Saulnier who built the first hundred airframes and all the wings for this legendary aircraft. This marked the beginning of the company's aerostructures production business, a phase of specialization that permitted Morin Saulnier to diversify. Innovation is part of the company's continued drive for excellence, as demonstrated by its ingenuity, as evidenced by the Fleuret project, which was never abandoned. Morin Saulnier had the simple and ingenious idea of extending the two-seater's fuselage to convert it to a four-seater. An avant-garde concept was born, the Morin Paris, the world's first business jet. Pressurized cabin, comfortable seats, and good handling qualities, the Paris flew at over 400 miles per hour. A tour of the United States for the Paris jet was organized along with Beechcraft, and prestigious clients such as Frank Sinatra and the Shah of Iran acquired these aircraft, along with orders that came from Brazil, Argentina, and France. For the budding business clientele, Morin Saulnier created the Paris III. It was the first and only five-seater business jet being produced at the time, and it was also used as a liaison aircraft for the Concorde's test pilots. This first very light jet was far ahead of its time. In 1959, Morin Saulnier launched a new program to design a light metallic aircraft that would be reliable and safe, the Rally. It was a huge commercial success, with over 3,500 planes sold, and it was used to train several generations of pilots. In the 60s, Morin Saulnier evolved. Important steps were taken, and the company continued its activities under the name Socata. Robert Morin was the last surviving member of the founding trio of aviation pioneers. He was 17 years old when the Wright brothers took their first flight, and he died in 1968, one year after the Concorde was introduced to the public. The 1973 oil crisis forced the manufacturer to create a range of more fuel-efficient planes and to innovate further in terms of aerostructures. The engineering office in Tarbes used new wing airfoils that later equipped the entire TB series, destined for private pilots, professional and military training. In all, over 2,000 aircraft were produced. 
In the early 90s, a revolutionary concept in business aircraft was born, a single-engine pressurized turboprop, the TBM 700, which offered a new way of traveling. Fast, comfortable, cost-efficient, plus it can land almost anywhere. In 2006, the TBM 850 succeeded it. More powerful, more modern, and boasting continued innovation, it is the world's fastest single-engine turboprop. With a range of more than 1,800 miles at 360 miles per hour, it rivals the best light business jets on the market. De Heer and Zakata joined forces in 2009 to form the aerospace cluster of the De Heer Group. The innovative spirit nurtured by the family business for nearly 150 years and its aviation experience since the 50s make its union with Zakata a unique combination in terms of know-how and expertise. The combined DNA of these two companies has opened up a third avenue, a diversified business offer that links aircraft manufacture, aerostructures, industrial and logical services, all backed by state-of-the-art technological specialties. De Heer Sakata creates its own world-leading airplanes. The company has a global vision of aircraft from conception to production and support. The manufacturer's know-how reinforces its aerostructures business in cooperation with other aircraft manufacturers. Thanks to its design office, De Heer Sakata adds value by constantly providing innovative solutions and anticipating problems linked to system integration. From the design to the assembly line, De Heer Sakata participates in the major aircraft programs of manufacturers such as Airbus, Dassault, Eurocopter, Bombardier and Embraer. For Airbus, the company has worked on several aircraft, including the next generation A350. On the A380, it has produced part of the forward fuselage as well as the reinforcement beams of the wings. For Eurocopter, the world's rotary wing industry leader, De Heer Sakata builds the airframe for the popular EC-130, along with a rear fuselage beam and fan and tail Fenestron rotor for this latest generation of high-performance helicopters. For aircraft manufacturer Dassault, the company produces the upper fuselage of its latest business jet, the Falcon 7X. De Heer is also a service company. In a globalized aviation industry, it aims to simplify manufacturers' processes and secure the supply chain. The transport of spare parts, delivery of assembled sections, assembly line construction and installation, these services demand logistical and industrial expertise. With its own information systems, De Heer controls the flow in real time. In addition, the company offers an aircraft maintenance service. Technological specialties will propel the company into the future. De Heer Sakata's experience allows it to devote its design office and engineering resources to major research programs. The company believes in the future of composites, metallics, and the combination of both. All trades on this pyramid communicate and interact with each other. It is the principle of the virtuous circle that enhances them all. That is why De Heer Sakata's offer today is so unique and diverse. Since 1911, foreseeing major trends and anticipating the needs of their clients has always been the soul of the company, and De Heer Sakata intends to stay ahead of the curve. From the beginnings of Morin Saunier to today, the company's key to success remains its people. Thanks to them, the company has produced an average of one aircraft every two days for the past 100 years. 